Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Uh, we're going to, um, I think this is our third budget advisory committee meeting. Uh, unfortunately, I may be adding another uh, in the, the first couple of weeks in June, but we'll talk about that. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Kaufman uh, to take us through the agenda. And this is uh, informal, so if you have a question, just raise your hand or yell out. It'll be all right. It's not so many of us. Yes. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, our agenda for tonight is to look up, look at the updated 23-24 financial status, um, you know, touch base kind of briefly, unless there's questions on the, the budgetary highlights. Um, the proposed revenues and expenditures kind of just go over the updates of what has changed since last month. Um, school budget and department budget, um, the proposed budget summary, and also kind of give a, a general update of um, where the state budget process is and where things kind of stand. <clears throat> so again, the listing of the, the members for the 2024 uh, Budget Advisory Committee meeting. Um, so for the current 23-24 expenditures, um, Little bit of changes again. The the major areas of the fourteen hundred and forty six hundred overages are due to ESSER funds not being budgeted, and they have a matching revenue on the revenue side. Um, Mr. Kaufman, I'm sorry, a little housekeeping. Uh, can we move sure. uh, Darlene Hill over to the uh, webinar side? Sure, Justin. Could you please do that when you when you get a chance? Thank you so much. Welcome, Ms. Hill. Thanks for being here. All right, sorry about that. No problem. Um, so any any questions related to the updated expenditure status from anybody before I move on? You can move on. Um, Again, just the updated status of the special education expenditures. Um, since it was requested for last meeting, I figured I'd give an update. Um, again, not much movement here. Um, at the end of the year, we'll make the adjustment to uh, correct the account codes for the average here that they should be charged down to this one. Um, but that's uh, kind of a reconciliation we'll do when we prepare for the audit. <laughs> For the revenues, um, we haven't had any movement because the the um, this data was run as of Monday and we didn't make a deposit until Tuesday night, um, but we did deposit 300,000 in delinquent taxes on Tuesday. Um, so just to give an update, that number actually should be about 600,000 now. Um, for state payments, they continue to come in. We usually get a large payment of uh, BEF in June. Uh, kind of to finalize the balance there. Um, state share benef benefits, we get our fourth payment as a receivable after the year ends. Um, so that will be recorded as of June 30th, but we won't see it until about August. Um, and here is that matching revenue of Esther that is over. Um, that would, I said would cover those 1400 and 4,600 expenditure overages. Um, so now that we've done a kind of <clears throat> large picture of the current status of the financials, um, does anybody have any questions on the revenue side? Um, so again, budgetary highlights, um, proposed revenues for 24-25. Um, again, revenues are made up of local, state, and federal revenues, so we'll touch base on, on all of them and, and come up with our total revenues for the year um, that our proposed budgets consist of. Um, so you will see there's been an adjustment to the current real estate tax number for um, this presentation. It's actually a decrease, and that is a result of an increase in the monies for homestead. Um, so it kind of just reduces that number and then goes into, into state funding. 
um, and we'll have a more detailed look at that later on in the presentation to give you a better idea of what that impact is. Um, other than that, the proposed local revenues have are remaining this have remained the same on this slide. Um, so here you see that 760,000 decrease that I was referring to. And then for the state side, so this is the property tax reduction. Um, and you'll see the increase here, 5.1 from 4.2. Um, so that's the offset of that decrease. Um, all other numbers um, are the same as last month. So yeah, this is where you can see that, that increase here. Any questions about the local or, or state revenues? Um, I kind of wanted to group them together because they were the change was you know impacted by the other. Mr. Kaufman, that yeah. difference of the eight point four million. Yes. Is that what, that's what we're looking for from the state. Yes, that is the proposed no number from the governor. So, uh, towards the end of this presentation, we're going to go into a spreadsheet that kind of looks at the impacts if we do not get that full 8.4 million um, to show um, potential cuts and um, different scenarios um, that not getting that full 8.4 million um, could create. Thank you. Um, for federal revenues, um, it's consistent with the, the prior month. Um, we still have not received our final number, so hopefully by the next presentation we will have final numbers. Um, but again, a, mat a revenue requires a matching expenditure, um, so if our federal revenue increase, um, we won't be able to reduce um, our other revenues um, because it must supplement what we currently do. <laughs> Okay. So the the totals of all those numbers about fifty three million in local sixty nine in state about seventy in state and four point seven in federal um, comes to revenues of one hundred twenty seven point seven million then to the expenditure side um, all these numbers are consistent with the prior prior month uh, three point two million in contracted expenses for next year. Um, so this number has, the facilities master plan ramp up has been updated to reflect a, a change as a result of the, the homestead. Um, so our target number was 800,000. So that number just increased from about 507,000 to 611,000 um, to total out to 5.8 million. Are there any questions related to, to that change? So it would be hard to do without these things, just yes. to, to know. Mm -hmm. um, so onto the school budgets. So the school budgets and the department budgets aren't exactly the same as last month, but I will <clears throat> recap in case anybody was unable to attend or uh, watch the recording. Um, so essentially these are the projected enrollments for next year for each school. Um, based on those enrollments, you um, the schools get allocated $150 per student, um, as well as an additional $20 if a if one of their students is enrolled in a special program, and then an additional $20 as well if that student is in uh, the ELL program. So if there's a student that is in a special program and ELL, that school receives an additional $40. Um, so that's how we come up with the budget figures to allocate to the school buildings um, for their operation dollars. Um, so linked here is our school budget methodology, which essentially uh, is a document that we came up with to allocate resources equitably, um, particularly around staffing. Um, so as a result of that document, uh, those are the 
number of position changes uh, that are recommended at about approximately $2.1 million. Um, again, that is consistent with last month. Um, before I move on to departments, any, any questions about the school budgets or the methodology or um, anything related to that? Okay. Uh, on to the department budgets. Um, as I had stated early, earlier, there um, are no differences from the last presentation. So department budgets overall increase of 1.3 million. Um, all 1.3 million is related to items that we had looked at in those contracted and contracted, but not contracted, but necessary slides. Um, so they're not in addition to, it's um, inclusive of those um, items that were spoken about earlier. Um, so for each department, you will see that in detail. Um, so for registration, there's no increase. Uh, for contracted uh, services, um, contracted security at, for student services, excuse me. Um, no increases for student services office. Uh, no increases for the business office. Um, total increase of 427,000 for maintenance and operation. Um, and that is, you know, the, related to the contractual increase um, for Aramark that we've already committed to um, and utility rates and usage increasing. Um, for transportation, the increase is 2720. Um, and that's related just to the, the contract that we have with first student. Uh, for human resources, uh, no proposed increase. Uh, for information technology, uh, 63,000 um, increases requested for the E-rate program. And for E-rate, um, it's a, a grant program where we get 85% of the cost back. Um, so it would be spending $63,000 to get a savings of 85%. Um, but just in case, for whatever reason, if the program doesn't run properly or they pull the funding, uh, we wanted to include it in the operating budget um, to be safe. Uh, no increase for the PLC program, the personalized learning community. No increase for the community relations department. Um, $5,400 increase for the research and, uh, research and evaluation, and that's just restoring the budget um, from last year. Uh, for special education, um, increase for special education programs at the DCIU, and also an increase for early intervention program at the DCIU uh, for a total increase of approximately 362,000. Um, no increases for professional development, uh, no increase for the assistant superintendent office, um, no increase for <clears throat> district-wide services, and no increases for the superintendent office. So I know I went through that very quickly, um, but I can um, answer questions related to any of those slides if anybody has any um, before I move on to the next section. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Um, so the total expenditures for, the, or the proposed total expenditures for the 24-25 um, budget, 81.7 relate to direct instructional expenditures, um, 36.7 to support service expenditures, um, 2 million to non-instructional services, and about 7.1, 7.2 million for debt service, again, to match revenues at 127,600 or excuse me, $127,698,986. Um, so for the proposed budget summary, um, as I had mentioned, revenues are matching expenditures. So currently there is no budget gap. Um, and here we have linked in the budget tool um, to look at different scenarios. Um, oh, excuse me, sorry, Ms. Plum. Uh, hi, quick question. I saw that it said community services on the last slide. What exactly is that? Um, so community services to, we don't, I'd have to double check, but I don't think our budget for community services is, is very high, but that would be um, 
like security that we paid for for rentals of property to um, student organizations that we do not charge um, under our current policy. Um, those charges could go to community services. Um, and then student activities are all the are the all the sports um, coaches um, and things like that. Gotcha. Thanks. Oh, and also band and um, plays and all clubs and things like that too. Don't want to exclude them. So that's all supplementals of this department? For the most part, yes. Right. Supplementals, uh, for those that don't know, are what we use to pay our teachers to do additional activities like sports, band, et cetera. Okay. Uh, so, nope. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Um, if you can make that spreadsheet as big as possible. Yes. Um, th this is where the rubber sort of hits the road. Uh, as of right now, uh, we sit here May 16th, and really our state legislators have not begun to work on the budget. Um, so these are the things that we sort of look at as a school district that doesn't know uh, the funding they'll be receiving. It's an unfortunate way to work, uh, but we are here. So take it away, Bob. <laughs> sure. So um, given the state of the state budget, uh, we've come up with um, different hypothetical scenarios where if the state funding was 50% of uh, what was provided, um, a scenario where we did just cuts with no tax increase, uh, where we met in the middle did a tax inc increase in cuts. Um, I, and again, with if we received 25% of the state funding, um, doing all cuts to have a balanced budget, and then also at 25% of the state revenue, um, doing both cuts and a tax increase. And again, these are all hypothetical situations. Um, so if we only receive state funding, 25% of state funding, um, this the, the decisions aren't set in stone at this point of what programs would be cut and things like that. So I don't want anybody to um, think that these are set in stone documents. It's kind of just to give everybody a big picture idea of you know what we might miss out on if we don't get all the revenue and things like that. Um, so the first couple lines, lines three through 19, are that first slide that we showed for the contracted services, um, that total 3.2 million. Um, so all these expenditures are, um, you know, everything we have the contract signed for and are obligated for for next year. Um, then we showed the revenue. So all these revenues are consistent with the slides that were previously shown. Um, so the number that we're going to be manipulating in these scenarios is the state basic uh, basic education subsidy. Um, right now we're showing an $8.4 million increase. Um, here's slide or line 60 through 70 are those um, that second slide of you know necessary but not necessarily contracted as of today um, so items that are subject to be cut if necessary although we deem them very necessary so things like a, you know the additional special education teachers um, you know staff members that support our most vulnerable students um, that have highest needs for um, education the additional teacher um, that a small increase for the operating budget based on our, our uh, methodology, uh, additional SSO to increase school safety, um, athletic complex, contracted security. Um, you know, there's could be a potential impact where if, in scenario where if we don't get all that money, we may not be able to have contracted security at the facility. Um, same thing with contracted security at the schools um, that is currently ongoing. Um, overtime increases to support um, home games at the athletic complex, um, night games, uh, weekend games, things like that. Uh, that ramp up um, to support the future construction projects. Like I said, our target was 800,000, but we had to cut that down to, to 611,000 to get a balanced budget. Um, so these were all the department asks. Um, they are already excluded, but I wanted to show the big picture of all the things and the dollar amount that we kind of had would liked to have had uh, to most efficiently run or effectively run the district um, that we weren't able to include based on the governor's budget. And then 
items that we have considered to cut in order to um, meet our revenues and have a balanced budget and items that could potentially be up for a cut if we don't receive all of that $8.4 million. Um, and then just a tax impact calculation. So um, as I had mentioned, that homestead reduction was increased. So it went from 571 per property to 686 per property. Um, so if you are a resident who receives a homestead reduction on your primary home, you'll actually get an additional reduction of $115 this year. Um, so, you know, we calculated different scenarios for different assessment values to show you. Um, obviously with no tax increase, it's it's pretty clear that you receive a, one, just a $115 um, decrease from the previous bill. Okay. Um, so that was our ideal scenario, which is also what was in the budget presentation. But if we look at um, state funding for 50%, for example, here's the highlighted in yellow, the, the major change um, that went from 40 some million to 37.8 million and only an increase of 4.2 million. Um, so highlighted in yellow are all the items that we had to exclude um, that we are currently including in our budget. So it's, you know, additional IAs to support um, children in special programs, additional English language uh, teachers, uh, one additional regular education teacher, um, additional SSO, um, like I said, the security and, and um, you know, completely zeroing out the facilities master plan ramp up, which could have a long-term impact on our capital plan. <clears throat> as well as you know, cutting safe corridors, reducing our IAs basically in half, and also uh, you know, reducing our regular education staff at the elementary level, which um, could have an impact on class sizes, for example. Again, I'm not saying this is exactly what we would do, but this is a, a, a real scenario that could happen and could be considered if we did not receive all that funding. Um, so as you can see, it's, it's not very good. Um, and then just um, for <clears throat> argument's sake, I'll also show a scenario with a tax increase um, where, you know, we try and keep a little bit more of the program and increase taxes, even though we have committed to, to not having an increase this year, but just wanted to show what the impact would be. Um, so like if, if we had to raise taxes by 1.5%, we would be able to keep um, the activities over time um, the additional IA to support special education, um, able to keep the elementary class or elementary regular education teachers to keep class sizes um, the way they are. Um, and a 1.5% increase, you know, if you have a homestead reduction, you would still see a decrease from your prior bill, um, at least up through a 200,000 assessment. Um, but if you don't have a homestead reduction, you know, this would be the impact on your property at, at the, the relevant assessed values. Um, so just to show you, you know, the major impact this, the state's budget has on us and the how it can trickle down to the community and things like that, or what programs and things like that, that we would have to cut in the event that the, all that revenue was not received. So I know... Um... This document, if you click on that link, you can download it and look at it at your leisure also. I, I know we're um, putting a lot out there, but this is really, really important that we be as transparent as possible on the effects of on not having a budget, number one, um, which is a whole different scenario, right? You just have no idea how much money you're getting versus not getting the $8 million the governor has proposed in his budget. So download the document and uh, Mr. Kaufman and I are very, very happy to answer any questions you have at any time. I, I have a, a question if that's okay. Sure, go for it, Mr. Cade. I put my camera on, but I'm currently celebrating National Mimosa Day, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so um, I, I was talking to a couple of voters on primary day, and 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 I get a general sense, and I think you guys noticed that I get a general sense that 
folks think that the school budget is 100% made up of things that school board directors, superintendents want to buy, want to spend on, and, and that's not the case. Can, can you talk a little bit about mandates and mandates that are un, unfunded? So, you know, j just in context, the, the, the Fed, federal government gives us money, state government gives us money, and they tell us, hey, you have to buy, you have to spend this on A, B, and C. But there's also a big chunk of the budget that they tell us that we have to do, but they also don't give us the money to do it. And, and that, that that's the unfunded mandate. Can you talk about that impact on districts and budgets like ours and how sensitive uh, we are to stuff like that? And then I want to squeeze in another question. Uh, the, the pension and and employee-related costs, healthcare, salaries, can, can you give us a, 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 a clearer sense of just the total nugget in the overall budget that that has an impact on? Sure. Um, so I'll start with the benefits because um, it's right at the top of the screen. Um, so for, for healthcare, our cost is um, kind of driven um, by the market. Um, so contractually, we have contracts with, um, you know, all of our employee groups and how, how what the benefits that will be provided are. Um, and then the market dictates how much those benefits will cost us. Um, so, you know, it's contracted in that, you know, our, our health care is probably going to be 521000 next year. Um, same thing with prescription. Prescription went up by 11%. Um, then when you talk about PSERS, the, the pension plan, um, it is 34% of salaries for the current year. Um, next year is 33.9%. Uh, so not much of a change. So the state although they require us to to contribute that much they only give they only give us revenues to support half that amount um so basically half of that amount um must come from from district local funds and and um, and in, in dollar amounts uh, and I probably have it, uh in dollar amounts what, what's half of that like like or, or what's the whole let me see so we go to So $9.5 million, so it's approximately $19 million. So the state says we have to spend that much. And it, and pension is a state function. And so, yeah. so we have to spend that much, but they're only giving us a fraction of that. And then the rest of that unfunded fraction comes right from the taxpayers, essentially, right? Correct. Um, Yes. Um, because all, all of these items, you know, have a particular um, cost that they're associated with. Um, all the state revenues do. So, you know, that other half, yes, would have to be covered by local funds, which is um, tax revenues. And then the other part of your question, unfund unfunded mandates. Um, so the the largest one that um, everybody can think of is our special education costs. So special education costs approximately $43,000 per student. Um, and as you can see, the state is only proposing $6.3 million um, in special education revenue. So um, I can tell you that sufficiently does not support um, our um, special programs at the district. Um, so that is one of our largest unfunded mandates. It's a huge number. Yes. So um, to your point, the current year number twenty two million and the state gives us six. So that's yeah, between that and the uh, pension that is that are two those are our two largest unfunded unfunded mandate mandates excuse me and and then in 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 your um in your context a little earlier i i loved how you broke down uh talking about you know uh class sizes teacher you know the the impact you know 
you know, any any shortfall that could be somebody's teacher, and what impact does that have? So, so I I think for the other listeners on the call, I think as we're unpacking and talking about this in our communities, talking to our state legislators, we, we don't have to talk about this whole entire slide, but every state rep, every senator knows what a teacher is. They know they know you know what class size can look like, right? And and I think as we talk about those things, you know, let's reference the this the smaller specific things. You know, hey, you know, if 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 we don't get that extra, would you say eight eight million, did you know that's one less kindergarten teacher in our school? Did you know that that's also you know, we we have a we have a wing in the high school that tends to leak or is tend to get really really cold sometimes. We, we kind of need to fix things like that. Um, I think as we talk about those things, we we kind of have to be like really specific and break it down on a really sm a much smaller scale to something that they also understand. I I, I think and and Jen, you could probably um, speak to this. And speaking to legislators, it, it say it, it's easy to assume that they know everything about these budgets. They don't. They, they, they know they know what they know. They don't know what William Penn is going through. They don't know what Southeast Del Southeast Delco is going through unless folks like us pick up the phone and just speak about that one small little thing. You know, and the more I think we do that, you know, talk about that one thing that we can, that we know and we talk about, I, I think that's how the, the easy advocacy grows. And um, thanks for having these these forums. I think these forums have been, have been excellent. I think, I, I, just speaking of, about my community, I, I know people are having conversations that are coming from these forums. They're coming because people are paying attention. You guys are breaking it down. Um, for everyday folks to kind of um, understand. And and um, I, I know you guys put a lot of time into it. And I know it's not easy. So I, just for me, I, I want to say thanks again. Thank you, uh, Rafi. Appreciate you. Back to my mimosa. <laughs> Back to you, Bob. Um, sure. So any other questions about the... Um... I just have... Uh piggyback on what uh, Mr. Cade has said about explaining to the community. But what do I say when I hear the communities, the, my community say, you know, you uh, have Curfield there, the money you spent in Curfield, how does that affect what we're talking about now, the budget? And also when we look at, I think I saw somewhere if we don't get these funds from the state, what we're looking at to cut security. And I think somewhere there was security for the complex and school safety. I mean, that's, that's major to even think about not having security in the schools and the complex also. So what can you say to those who say the taxpayers, even if it's 1.5, that taxes are raised because of Curfield. How do you speak on that to the community? I think that's a really um, interesting question, Ms. Luella. Of course, in the state of Pennsylvania, we fund public education on property taxes, right? So if we're going to build a field, it's because our communities pay their taxes and allow us to do so. Right, that's just a zillion percent honest. And, but these, you know, it, it's hard, right? Cause we have to go to the taxpayer. But that's also why this district hasn't been in court for the last nine years fighting to do things differently. So yes, right, it's a problem, but everyone here at William Penn School District is doing their darndest to overcome this funding issue for our district and our citizens. Um, and it, it's hard, you know, you have nine years and you have a basic education funding commission a report that says, yes, let's fund them. You have $14 billion in the rainy day fund and still we're having this conversation on May 16th. 
So, you know, tough one, but you know, if, if you want to do a forum in your community, um, I'm sure a lot of us would be happy to come out and have these conversations. And that goes for anybody, you know, uh, we want to be out there with this. Um, so if you want us to come to your community, uh, we will. So just let us know. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Leola. Um, I just have one uh, question about the um, the project that was done with Kerfield. Um, was there any grant money involved in that? Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, there was a seven million dollar grant um, for that project. Okay. Thank you. No, thanks for asking. Okay. All right, back to you, Mr. Kaufman. Okay. Um, so again, just want to reiterate, those are all hypothetical situations. If the number comes in differently, we haven't um, fully met as a team to exactly what items would be excluded and cut. So um, just want everybody to be um, clear on that. Um, but those are meetings that are coming up um, and coming up in the next couple of weeks um, as we get more information. <clears throat> Uh, so for a state budget update, um, you know, general highlight, um, governor's proposed basic education funding for state statewide was about one, excuse me, $1 billion um, of that increase, uh, 8.4 million, um, as you saw on the slides, was for William Penn. Uh, proposed increase for special education funding for the whole budget was about $50 million. Um, of that increase, 357000 for William Penn. Um, no uh, increases to state taxes, um, so state income tax. Um, instead, to fund that $3 billion increase, it, the plan would be to spend down $14 million, uh, 14 billion excuse me, $3 billion and $14 billion um, in the rainy day surplus reserves. Um, the Senate recently um, pushed a bill um, for a $3 billion reduction of the $14 billion surplus. However, their, their spend down of that $14 billion would be by cutting income taxes and electric service taxes. Um, so what that says is they, you know, we don't know if basic education increase is in their proposal or how, where they're cutting their expenditures. Um, so they actually had no increase proposed from what I could see in the basic education or special education in order to cut that $3 billion. Mr. Kaufman, um, yes. if you all, will all allow me, uh, the Senate uh, bill proposal is is a, a slap in the face. Um, it reduces uh, income tax on the wealthy in the state of Pennsylvania. If you make over $1.5 million, uh, this will save you about $5,000. If you make the state average of $62,000 a year, it'll save you $118. So the $3 billion they are wanting to spend does not help us and it, it hurts us, right? Why spend $3 billion to give the wealthy a tax decrease um, when you should be funding our young people by court order. Um, so sorry to be on that soapbox, but that Senate proposal is pretty, pretty a lot. So go on, Bob, thank you. Mm -hmm. So that is all I have for tonight. Uh, future meetings, um, BNF on today, May 16th, um, final preliminary budget meeting on May 20th. Um, with the final adoption in on June 20th, 24th. Um, we also need to schedule our um, meeting on in the couple, couple of weeks that Jennifer had spoken about. And there's, um, I think I accidentally left it off this slide. There should be a meeting between um, before June 24th as well. Um, so I will email out that information. I apologize for leaving it off the slide. That's no problem. Um, so I wanna explain what happens in number two. Uh, number two is uh, um, we put out a number as as honest a number as we can, but is totally changeable on June 24th. 
uh, the law is that the public must have 30 days to uh, look at a preliminary budget. So um, we will probably schedule a meeting for the first or second uh, week in June. Uh, we will be hopeful that the House and Senate will get together and work in earnest on a budget. And uh, then on June 24th, we'll do our best. If there is not a budget and we think they're close, uh, that meeting could be, um, we could hold a specific voting meeting to like go to June 30th. We've had to do that in the past, but if it's not, if it's clear that there's no way it's happening, then we'll probably go on June 24th. Um, there is some uh, legislative difference. If when we um, close our budget, we can reopen it again. Um, it depends on the uh, legislator you ask. So once we make a budget, it's it may be hard to adjust the budget if we got good news or bad news. Does anyone have any questions? I'm sorry to be um, have this be a little more somber of a tone, uh, but I think it's uh, important that we're um, very honest about what's going on uh, financially in the school district. All right. So, Jennifer, yeah. Jennifer. Yeah. So one of the things that we can do is reach out to our senators and have us, I call it a sidebar conversation. Right. And so I was actually, concerns. yeah, I was on with the Pennsylvania School Board Association today with our senators and Representative Curry. And I always encourage citizens to reach out. Um, and then tomorrow we're at the IU with our legislators to have this uh, very similar conversation. Um, so yes, everyone call, be outraged. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Ms. Anyone else? All right, appreciate you all. Um, this video, this recording and uh, our documents will be up uh, tomorrow-ish. The document's up now. All right, thank you so much.